Well, now that we've learned how to make an essentially perfect integrator with operational amplifiers, I'd like to show a lovely example of something that you can do with these. In particular, you can use integrators to solve uh, differential equations. Uh, with linear differential equations, you simply need integrators and summing junctions to add the coefficient terms in. But you can even solve a system of nonlinear differential equations in which there are product terms by including within your circuit not only integrator modules, but also multiplier modules. And these are constructed uh, using a technique we actually would understand at this point. Uh, namely, you'll remember that in a differential amplifier, the gain of the individual stages with, with no external emitter resistors is inversely proportional to little r sub e. But that is inversely proportional to the uh, collector current. And therefore, the gain is proportional to the emitter current. So by having one signal control the emitter current and have the second signal go in as an input to the bases, we get the product of those two terms. And that's the technique by which these multipliers are constructed, and you buy them as a single module. Anyway, just to go to the equations that I'd like to illustrate here today with the circuit, uh, this is a set of equations that was published in 1963 in the Journal of Atmospheric Chemistry by Edward Lorentz. And it consists of three first-order uh, differential equations. They're nonlinear. They have terms like x, y, and x, z in them. It's a system of equations in x, y, and z. Their uh, a, b, and c are constant coefficients, and the suggested parameters that Lorentz gave was, were these particular values. What's interesting about this set of equations is they look very simple, but the solution is, is, uh, has wonderful complexity to it. In fact, if you look at x, y, and z plotted in three dimensions, the solution executes a trajectory that winds around and around, never repeating the same uh, place, very sensitive to initial conditions, and in a chaotic, what's known as a chaotic trajectory. It occupies a region known as the attractor, and this whole system of equations is often referred to as the Lorentz attractor. Now, how do you convert this into an electronic circuit that Oh, I guess the first thing I should say is it's rather easy to model this numerically, and you can find on the web numerous examples. You can get JavaScript that will download to your computer and that will give you solutions x, y, and z. One plot, for instance, x plotted against z uh, on your screen, and they're quite handsome things. I'll show some examples in a minute. But we can do better. We can do this as an analog computation module using the integrators and multipliers. So let's see how we do it. Now, if you look at the circuit I've constructed, this is the complete circuit with component values shown to uh, solve the, the system, the Lorentz system of equations. Here, for instance, we have an integrator that's integrating uh, the sum of two input terms, one of the terms being x itself uh, coming in, and the other one being minus y, which comes out of a second integrator here. And what we've done here is simply integrated each of these equations once with respect to time. So we have x of t is the integral of some constant times y minus x. So here it is, x of t is the integral of some constant, it's the same resistor value for both, of y minus x. Now you see here we actually have x minus y, but that overall minus sign comes from the fact that an integrator is an inverting integrator because it's wired as an inverting configuration and therefore it puts an overall minus sign in. So that's, a, that's for instance how this x term comes about. We might look for instance at the z term, and here the z term is a weighted sum of z itself. So here we integrate this once, c times z and uh, also the uh, term xy, and we get that by multiplying in a multiplier module the output x and the output minus y, and that gives us the product minus xy. So those get combined with resistor values which are chosen to uh, set up these particular constant values suggested by Lorentz. So you just take the circuit, switch on the power, and look at x, y, and z. In fact, the best thing with an oscilloscope is simply look at a pair, and what I'll show shortly is is x versus z, or rather z versus x on an oscilloscope. Now what I'd like to show before I show you the actual simulation is what these things look like when done numerically. And so if we can zoom in on this particular top plot here. Uh, this plot here is a, plot, is a function of time of uh, x, y, and z, and I'm not sure which color represents which, but you see a trajectory that you might think initially is periodic, but it's not really periodic. And in fact, when you see the behavior of our electrical circuit, you'll see that it's 
not periodic, but it's not completely random either. It moves around and around, but it seems to have a region that it likes to occupy. It's extremely sensitive to initial conditions. This gives rise to the so-called butterfly effect in chaotic behavior, in which uh, a small change in initial conditions can give rise to a huge change in subsequent conditions. And people talk about things like Lyapunov exponents to describe this behavior. Down here is a picture of uh, this, this trajectory flattened into two dimensions. And I believe this is uh, y versus z. And this came off the web this morning. The top Google hit on Lorentz Attractor gave us these pictures. This is just a plot of a bunch of cycles of this uh, system done, again, numerically. And the bottom one, people get quite artistic about this stuff. And this bottom picture is a gorgeous uh, artistic rendering of a number of cycles of the Lorentz Attractor trajectory rendered with little globs against a beautiful shaded background. But more beautiful than any of these, I think, are the electronic implementation, which I'll show now. Well, this is the actual uh, circuit board. I'm using the little nylon breadboards that we use in Physics 123 here. And I've wired up on this circuit. Um, there's three op amps here with three capacitors forming the integrator. And then these larger 16-pin uh, dips are the multiplier modules. Each one does a single multiply. So there's two of those required for the circuit. Over to the right, there's um, simply some line drivers for driving coax cable. And the scope probes are clipped over here on the right. If you zoom out just a little bit, you'll be able to see that. And also, you'll see here, I'm just holding up for reference, the complete circuit diagram. It looks just like what we had on the blackboard. The only difference being that a little more detail is shown here on the multipliers, where you have to uh, implement the correct scaling factor and sign of the input. So I've, I've shown all the pin numbers. This circuit, by the way, and the behavior can be found on, on our website. You can go to paulhorowitz.com and follow your nose. You'll find this, this circuit. OK, let's show the behavior. And what we'd like to do now is swing over to the oscilloscope and zoom in on the um, screen. And I'm now turning up the brightness so that you can see this trajectory. Looks slightly overexposed there. Perhaps you can close down the aperture just a little bit. And um, what you're seeing is this chaotic trajectory plotted uh, z vertically and uh, x horizontally. And it's doing just the sort of thing that we've seen in these examples on the blackboard. Uh, it's doing it kind of rapidly, and it's a little hard to see really how it's doing it, even which direction it's turning. However, we can fix that by changing the integration capacitor. And I'm going to do that now. I'm going to pull out these rather small values and change the time scale now by putting in a larger value of capacitor. And here you can see how it swings around. Um, around one basin of attraction, as they call it. And then after a while, it swings over to the other one, and back and forth, and so on. In fact, you can have a lot of fun with the circuit by taking those capacitors out and going completely to very slow values. And now I'm going to 0.47 microfarads. That last one was 2,000 picofarads. And now you can really see that it has a mind of its own. Let me just turn down the brightness a little bit here. so We don't overexpose so much. And you can see it's swinging around. and goes like that. And every once in a while, it seems to stop from hesitate for a moment and decide which basin it's going to swing over to. Here it goes. Just a marvelous circuit. You can, of course, plot x versus y, x versus z, or y versus c. Anyway, this is an example, one of many, of the kinds of things you can do with integrators and function modules. And what we've built here, basically, is a small analog computer. These were quite popular things before digital computers became the method of choice for solving complex uh, problems. And you can still find some old analog computers lying around old laboratories. <laughs>